Okay, our next product is 2P10, and this is one of my favorite products because it's so useful, and there's so many applications for it. We're wearing safety glasses. You don't want to get this in your eyes, so let's go. You ready, Ray? Absolutely. Okay. Let's do it. So 2P10 means two-part, 10-second adhesive. It's a liquid acrylic plastic. You have one part, which is acrylic, and the other part is the activator. You put the two together, sets in 10 seconds, cures in 30 seconds. Any questions? Absolutely not. Okay, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was that easy. Paul, I think this is one of the most exciting products you have. I would like to spend a lot of time with that. Good. There's a lot to know about it. We're going to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I like to talk a lot, so it won't be a problem. Let's you ready? It. Okay. So anyways, 2P10 comes in a couple different ways of packaging. We have our kit, which is really awesome for installers, and this gives you an activator, a debonder, a gel, a thick, a medium, and a thin. A couple micro tips for getting into small cracks and a pump spray right there. Just a nice system for about 30 bucks. It's easy. It's compact. Comes in a kit. You have everything you need. Then, when you get into 2P10 a little more, you're going to buy the larger 10 ounce bottles. That's what I use all the time because I go through this stuff like ranch dressing as one of my right. best customers uh, refers to it. It's just an amazing product. So anyways, how you use it is simply like this. We'll take our glue, we'll take the gel, and we'll take a little bit of gel and put it on the end of this block just like that. And the cool thing about it is... Doesn't run. Doesn't, Doesn't run. Strip. Okay. Now the medium thick and thin will a little bit and I need one more block of wood right here. Then we take our activator and something cool that we just did, Ray, is we changed and we put this little nozzle on there which allows you to target spray a little better and get into a little smaller area. Spray. Right. Exactly. So now you take this, you put it on there like that. Here's a critical element. I'm going to rub this around so that the glue gets into all the pores. If you want the strongest possible joint, you need to move that glue into the pores of the wood. Right. You don't just want to stick it together, particularly on a difficult joint like end grain. So a lot of people say, well, my joint popped when I used 2P10. Generally, the reason why is because they haven't taken the time to wet in the joint, is what we call it, wetting in. Now, you notice I'm not hurrying. Mm -hmm. I sprayed the activator right. on there. It's not going anywhere. I can come back a half hour later, that activator's still there. What's evaporated off is the carrier. This is 95% acetone, 5% amine. The amine is the chemical that actually makes this glue set up. The amine doesn't evaporate, it just sits there. You got it, okay? Now, can you spray also, can you put it together when it's still wet with the acetone? The answer is yes. It's better if you let it evaporate off, which takes a couple seconds, so it's no big deal. On the other hand, I can come back a half hour later and this glue will still be wet. It will not catalyze. So it's very stable, very easy, which is one of the unusual things about 2B10 that most people don't know is it has a two-year shelf life. Were you aware of that? I heard it in the show. In the yeah. Show. Yeah, I was told in the last show and I was surprised that after you open it, it has a two-year two, shelf life. Right. It's amazing compared to some of the other products on the market. Because, and the way we did that is this is a commercial grade cyanoacrylate, triple distilled, extremely stable, no preservatives are in it, it's all made domestically in the United States. It's an amazing glue that is not the cheap, dumbed down version that consumers use. Right. And that's what makes it so stable. A two-year shelf life obviously refers to being closed. After you open it, you have to close it. Right, you want to close it because it, what makes this stuff set off is moisture. So if it's exposed to an excessive amount of moisture because you didn't cap the bottle, it could begin to catalyze. But what of course, in that case... Extreme temperatures. Good point. Extreme heat, it's a thermal reaction, so heat could cause it to go off as well. Mm -hmm. So if you get in a really hot climate like Phoenix, you lock it in the back of your van, it's 130 degrees in the van, right. you're probably going to catalyze it in about a month or so instead of two years, in which case we'd still replace it. No charge. There you go. Okay? That's a commitment. Yeah. So here we go. There's there's that. So we're going to take this and we're going to move it around just like that. And notice how I got that all wetted in really nicely. It's all wet. And I'm not hurrying too much because I have a lot of mass of glue on there. And then I just push it together. And how long is it going to dry? 10 seconds. 10 seconds. It's set. You got it. And 30 seconds cured. Now all I'm going to do here is catalyze the excess glue that came off. And away you go. It's done just like that. I'll let that sit, come back in 30 seconds and try to break that, and I will be able to break it, but it's amazingly strong. So now we've got the gel, but you're probably wondering, what are we gonna do with the medium, the thick, and the thin and everything? So here's a good application for thin. Let's say I have a piece of molding, 
and I have a splinter that comes up just like this. See how that is? Mm -hmm. And I want to get in there. I'm going to go ahead and take my thin, which I've got all my glues put into my baby bots because I like dispensing it out of these. It's very easy. It's very controlled. And then I'm going to go ahead and take this with no activator and hold that down. Why am I doing that, Ray? You don't want to use your finger. Yeah, you don't I don't want to get it all over myself. Okay, can you spray it real quick? So I'm holding that down. Okay, 10 seconds set. There we go, just like that. Then I can take a piece of sandpaper, which is really cool, and I can take that and just sand that joint right back in. And where I had a problem... The problem is gone. Pretty cool. Wonderful. Not our ages. That is amazing. Yeah, it's a cool product. It has a lot of cool benefits that you can do with it. Especially, most people are not aware of melamine, how well it sticks to melamine. So I'll show you how that works too. So again, this time I'm going to spray the activator right onto the melamine. I'm going to take that on there like this. Push that together and it's set that quick. Now you notice how I got that little bit of glue right there? Mm -hmm. What I'm going to do there is I'm going to spray a little bit of activator on there, which will begin the catalyzing. And before it gets too hard, I'm going to come in there with my utility knife, right? And I'm going to carve that out and just release it. If you let it get too hard though, it can get a little difficult to take off. But the key is not to have any excess anywhere. Go ahead and break it. Wow. Oh, Isn't that pretty cool? Great. Focus is on that. <laughs> Ray, you're a comic, man. <laughs> so an, another cool thing is particle board. It works really well with that as well. I'm going to take this, go like this. Put those two together. I like to use my fingers to line it up right there. And again, 10 seconds set, 30 seconds cured. Set up already. Give it another 20 seconds, it's cured, and away you go. And you can just glue just about anything with this. The key is making sure you get enough glue on there to wet in. The benefits of the glue are how fast it sets up and how strong it is. The negatives of the glue are because it's an acrylic plastic, it's brittle. So if you're under a lot of shock load, you can crack the joint. Right. Does that make sense? Now, once the activator and the glue is applied, and you put the, you join the two pieces, mm -hmm. how much time do you have to adjust, to make minor adjustments? The question is how much glue you put on. If you put a little bit of glue on, it's gonna catalyze very quickly, so you have about two to four seconds. To four if you put a lot of glue on, like I did when I did this joint, it was very wet, it took longer to catalyze. You can even try to break this one now. And so if you put a lot of glue on, it, there's a bigger mass of glue, five to 10 seconds. Does that answer the question? Yes, but I can break it. <laughs> Try to break it on the side of the bench here. You should be able to do it if you do that. To break it, it just hit it really hard. Come on, Ray. Show me. So just like that. So you can see, I got some blowout here on the wood, got some fibers to come out but it's a very, very strong joint. And you can see a hard blow, you can finally get it to break. That's what you need, yeah. So a way to overcome that though, here's another cool trick that most people are not aware of. When you're doing 2P10 and you're doing miter joints, and you have a joint that might require some elasticity or it's gonna be under some shock load, you can actually use alphetic resin or regular yellow glue. So watch this, I take the yellow glue, and I put the yellow glue on here just like this. So I do my joint in yellow glue. Then I take the gel and I'm just using our glue as a fixture or a way of actually clamping it. See how I put a little bit right on there? there? So I've got a little bit of gel here and I've got the alphabetic resin here. It doesn't matter if they mix together, it won't hurt anything. But I don't want to mix it together, but it's not gonna hurt anything if I do. Then I spray a little bit of activator there and there on the two places I know it's going to touch and then I bring that joint together just like that and hold it for about 10 seconds 
our glue will act, or the 2P10 will act as a fixturing, and the alphatic resin will give you the long term of elasticity. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So you can use the tool in conjunction, and there I glued that to that just a little bit, and there we go. It's all done and no nail holes, as opposed to this. Look what happens, you don't want nail holes okay, all over the place. It. One question to that application. Um, you put the applicator here, you put the glue there, mm -hmm. you joined it, broke it apart. Can we put the same two pieces together again after the, the first time? The answer is yes, you can. It glues great to itself. There's no problem at all, and we'll do that real quick. So there's the glue. Let's throw a little activator, make sure we get the right side. There you go. And again, make the sure. same thing. You want to wet it in a little bit, make sure that it gets a chance to penetrate into everything. Hold it together. 10 seconds set, 30 seconds cured, 4,000 PSI. So I think you're set now on that. So I think all you're going to do is spray the excess. Now, we see that there's a lot of glue on here. There's a lot of excess. For the record, so everybody knows, we don't want to have glue oozing out of the side because it's messy and it requires another step. But the nice thing about the glue is you can sand it. It sands perfectly. You can use it for filling holes and everything else. But the idea is to control the way you put it on, hence the gel. I see another product here, which is the debonder. Right. And the debonder, most people think that this is for cleaning up. No, for taking the glue joint apart. It's actually for cleanup. Yeah, so if you I get a little... this question before. Yeah, exactly. So you get a little glue on a piece of melamine like this. Let's say I had a little glue on here. And I didn't want it on there. I was gluing a countertop up or something like that. I'll activate that. And I want to get rid of that. It's the debonder that you would use to dissolve that glue. So what you do is you take this. It's got a little brush. Just like that. And you put it on there, and it doesn't dissolve it instantly. It takes a couple minutes. Wipe it off. Scrape it a little bit. Don't scrape it too much if you if you don't want to mess up your surface. Right, right. But it might take two or three applications to loosen it. But it is not designed to, to the actual joint the part. It is not. Absolutely not. Okay. So we went over the thin, the thick, the medium. Those are all for different kinds of cracks, depending upon how big the crack is, how much material you want to fill. People use all three of those viscosities, but again, my favorite is the gel because it doesn't run and it's the easiest to use and it has the best gap filling. So you got a big old hole you want to fill, right. put it in there, away right you go. Right. So one thing I've done before for people to kind of show them, I don't know if you're aware of this, you can actually take and make a hole like this. So I've got a hole in there. I take the activator, spray the activator in there, then take the gel. Put it in there just like that. Then wipe off the excess just like that to smooth it out. Take the activator again, spray it on the top, and now what's happening is it's curing from the bottom up and the top down. I've got a total resin fill, sand it off, and I'm done. So I got a screw hole that's stripped out and a European hinge. Wonderful. Make sense? Fixed. Pretty easy. Yes. So you can also add colorant to this, and we're actually coming out with some pigments where you can change the color of it to a brown, a black, a red, or a blue, or something like that, and that'll be available probably in about six months. Or you can add the sawdust to it. You mix the sawdust right into the glue, just like this. If I take this right here, hopefully Andrew can see that okay. So I'll take this right here just like that, put a little glue in there like that, and then just mix it up and make a little sawdust putty. And then take it back over here and rub it into the hole, just like that. And then catalyze it. And now I've suspended the particulates in the glue, which makes it really, really easy to use for a variety of different things that woodworkers need to do all the Absolutely. time. Absolutely. They come up with the applications like that on a daily basis. You got Based it. Applications like that on a daily basis. So again, super versatile. Another cool thing that we just came out with was the caulking tube. And the way this works is it's a... 10 ounce, the same as this 10 ounce. Same glue, everything's the same. The difference is this is in a different kind of applicator for more heavy production. You're doing big molding jobs or people want to apply a lot more of it fit more quickly. That's the way you do it. But what you need to know about this is when you take off the end here, right, you have to cut this end right here, just like this. Just cut that off, okay, and that exposes your glue. 
screw that tip back on. That's the gel. Yeah, this is the gel. And then it's got another little cap on the end of here. And that looks like it's free. So if I was gluing something together like this, not that I would do this, but you actually could do this. And I have done it, to be honest with you. I've glued many two, two by fours together. And I'm gonna take my cutters and open that up just a little bit. Oh, there you go. Just like that, nice bead. Make sure you press off the end of that. 